Hey there, Toads and Toadettes. Welcome back. It's Chris with Good Roads. In this video, we're going to continue the snowboard build we've been working on. When we were last together, we did some sidewall experiments, but in the video prior to that, we made the base sheet. And in that video, I said that the base sheet is a deceptively important component of the board because the base sheet determines the shape of the edges and the edges determine the shape of the board. Well, now we have a nice curvy base sheet and we need some nice curvy edges to go along with it. The problem is edges come in spooled wire. Not very curvy, not very sexy. And in addition, they're made of stainless steel, hardened steel, or hardened stainless steel, which, as you may have guessed, is hard. So, we have to find a way to impart some curves on this here stubborn edge wire. And in this video, we're going to be modifying a set of tile nippers to make an edge bending tool to do just that. We're going to need a couple things. A cheap set of tile nippers, a sharpie, an angle grinder or a rotary tool. I also make use of a set of digital calipers, a belt grinder, and some plastic dip, but you can get by without all that. So let's get started. First things first, the tile nippers that I'm using have these chamfers on the edges of the jaw and they need to go. We want the jaws to have two faces that meet cleanly. So I use the belt grinder to mate those faces and to also clean up all the working surfaces of our tool to give me a good place to start from. The next step is to mark out the new shape of the jaws to turn them into something that we can use to bend edge wire. I used a Sharpie for marking fluid and coated the jaws in ink. And then using the calipers, I measured the width of the jaws. We want to divide them into thirds, so I set the calipers to a third of the width of the jaws and use them to scribe my lines. We're going to remove the middle third from one jaw and the outer thirds from the other to make a matching pair. So I also scribed an additional set of lines at the depth that I wanted to remove. Next I broke out the angle grinder to do some serious stock removal. A rotary tool would also work here. In some ways it would have made the project a lot easier, but I don't have one. My dog ate mine. And here you can see the jaws of our tool roughed out. We want the protrusion on one side to fit in the gap on the other side, so there's still a lot of material to remove. And at this point I moved over to the belt grinder. It's a little bit more delicate and gives me a lot more precise control. After getting the jaws into the shape that I wanted, I moved over to hand sanding to clean up some of the final details and polish things up. The pair of nippers I'm working from were high carbon, and I suspect they had been hardened as well because all of my files were skating off of them. The sandpaper didn't do much, but it did allow me to break some hard edges and clean up my working faces. Now for the working end of the tool, we don't need the jaws to meet perfectly, but we do need them to overlap. We do need that protrusion to go into the gap in the other jaw. And you can see here that mine aren't doing that. The problem is, now that I've removed all that material, the reins of the tool are knocking together and stopping the jaws from closing any further. So we need to open them back up, which has the added benefit of making the tool more comfortable and easier to use. Using a utility knife, I cut off the existing grip, Thank you. 
and then one at a time, I chucked the reins in a vise. Using a torch, I heated the part of the handle where I wanted my bend till it glowed red hot. Grabbed it with a pair of channel locks, and then bent them into the new, more open shape. Now at this point I have a perfectly functional tool, but I did like those grips that I cut off. It was just a little bit more ergonomic and I wanna to try to replicate that on the tool that I'm making. So I masked off the upper part of the tool and sprayed a few layers of Plasti Dip to recoat the handles. When it was dry, I removed the tape and used a knife to clean up the edges. And here it is. We've got our set of jaws that work really nicely. We've got a comfortably shaped set of handles that don't knock together before we need them to, they still touch. And we've got a nice grippy rubber coating on them, but the question is, do they work? Yeah, they work great. You can bend the edge wire either direction. You can do tight curves, you can do broad curves. The reins are comfortable. You get a nice grip with that rubber we put on them. The jaws are clean and neat. Honestly, I put a lot more work into this than was necessary, but I have really strong feelings when it comes to tool making. A pleasant tool makes for pleasant work. If you're gonna be spending a lot of time using something, it pays to take the time to make it nice to use. So for me, it's worth the extra effort for that fit and finish because it makes my life easier down the line and more enjoyable. I like having nice tools and so should you. Anyhow, we now have a means by which to bend our edge wire so that it matches up perfectly with our base material. I wanna get in a little bit more practice with this tool before I tackle the real thing. But once I've done that, that's the next step. We're gonna bend our edges and attach them to the base sheet. So if you like what we're doing here, you wanna see where it goes, give us a subscription. It always helps out. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I try to respond to as many as possible. Thanks as always for coming along with me on the journey and until next time, I'll see you soon.